I think my pictures are most well known for their graphic nature and there's a certain sort of crunchiness to them. They tend to be very real. Even in the commercial side of things, there's a, a gritty aesthetic to them. It comes from understanding a lot of what I'm shooting for and to me life is, is gritty. Nothing. I mean, I'm sitting on a concrete floor here. The print ultimately is the actualization of the original capture, of the original vision. So in some ways it kind of completes the circle. You can have a, a digital file out there in the ether, but when you print it, you're kind of locking it down. You're saying, this is my interpretation of it. And there's something very powerful when an artist actually points at something and says, this is the way it is. The print is that. Describing my Seattle 100 project is tough because it's been a project that's going on for three years. Basically, it's documenting underground cultural leaders in Seattle. I tried to capture the essence and kind of the soul of the people. When I was envisioning the Seattle 100 exhibition, I wanted a handful of smaller prints, and in this case, we've just taken excerpts out of the book. But the, for the real impact, I wanted very large prints, and I wanted a lot of them. So we've got uh, 45 images printed at 44 inches by 55 inches wide. For me, the, a large image creates an impact that uh, a small image can't. Uh, in this case, for example, I connect very deeply and very humanly with someone and something in this picture that is the same size or perhaps larger than me. We've decided to hang the show in a, a really unique way. I want it to feel very visceral. I want it to feel very made in an instant, very accessible. So by simply mounting these images through clips that you can buy at the hardware store on very, very thick cardboard, I'm hoping to achieve an aesthetic that kind of addresses my desire to have it be approachable. I did send images out to be made for years and years, and we decided to bring, bring it in-house purely so that we had creative control. There's nothing like being able to tweak a print while you're going through the process of, of making that perfect print the way you want it. And I don't ever recall receiving a print from a lab that was exactly what I wanted. And now all of these are exactly what I want. I use a wide variety of papers, but specifically with Seattle 100, I chose the, the premium luster for some very specific reasons, actually. One, it comes in a variety of sizes. It comes in the big size that we knew we wanted to print, and then we also have a section 106 images I mentioned that are in a smaller size. But maybe even more important is that and if these things aren't behind glass and being professionally framed, I want to be able to pick them up and pull them and hold them. And I couldn't do that with a delicate paper. This is a very, it's a robust paper. It's very durable, and that was essential for the project. While durability was obviously really important for the show, uh, there was no compromise in the quality of the paper. Um, it's a very professional paper. I mean, just look, you can, you can read the DMAX from this print right here. Look how black the blacks are and how, how, it, how great it does with the highlights and the whites there. These images are contrasting in purpose and that you know, premium luster paper did it justice. Seattle 100 project is obviously black and white. I'm sitting here amidst a bunch of black and white prints, but the color renditions that come out of premium luster paper, they make it feel like I'm getting that print that I couldn't get in the dark room. Part of a crisp aesthetic is having a really good white. And so the de-min, the, the bright spots of the image, in order to, to cultivate that aesthetic that I wanted, the premium luster was really important and been able to be black as night and, and bright as day. One of my favorite images of the show is an image of Megan Jasper. She's got black hair and she's a black chihuahua sitting in her lap. And the premium luster, it, one of the ways that I really gravitated toward this paper was when I printed that image. I fell in love with the fact that I could see the detail in there despite, you know, it's just not a big black blob. It's, it, you can see the hairs on the dog, the threads on her sweater, and it, it's, it came out beautiful. Technically speaking, uh, the luster paper has an e-surface on it, and that actually played really significantly into me choosing this paper for this project. Uh, when you feel the book, there's, there's a gloss to the book, but there's not, it's not too glossy. It's the right amount of sheen, and the paper that I chose to print the show on needed to feel the same way. And all of the papers, everything that we've, we've done with Seattle 100, it has to have the right feel, and that, that luster paper nailed it.
here of, uh, of Nabil, a friend of mine. A ton of D-min in that image. Look at all the, the highlights and the whites, and there's incredible detail hidden in there that if you could come up here in that little camera and point it right out there, you would be, you'd be very impressed. And again, that's, that fits very well with the style that I wanted to shoot this whole project in. Without a paper that could hold on to that, I'd have been in trouble. A print has to be the best version of itself before I'll ever put my name to it. Because what I'm signing, I mean, it, it's really a piece of me that I'm pushing out into the world. Obviously, if you look around here, the premium luster paper has become a really core component of, of our prints. I print on other papers, but this, this is the workhorse. This is something I'm really proud of.